I call this meeting to order at 8.48. Meeting call to order. All right, I'm going to, right now, I'm going to make the motion that we just cancel this meeting. We want to play this little, little teeny game and we add all this on the Monday night. And so be it. I don't care if we're here at midnight or one in the morning. Point of order. No, I made a motion. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wilson uh, is misrepresenting the call of the public to question the validity of this meeting. So if he wants to make that in a calm and respective way, thank I would you. honor that thank motion. You. Trust me, sir. Thank Mr. May. Thank Mr. you. Thank you. Thank you comments from be. the public. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and put those up right now. Um, so as the moderator of this meeting, as the mayor of the city of Newport, I will respect that um, Mr. Wilson, as council president, has made the motion, and I'll ask for a second. A second. That's a second from Mr. Charbonneau, council member. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Motion carried. All of these items will be added to the duly warned meeting on Monday evening. Thank you. I need a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Charbonneau. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Charbonneau. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Vashon. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Motion carried to adjourn at 8. 50 a.m. on Saturday morning, May 20th. Thank you. I'd like to welcome you to this special meeting on 522 at 5.30 in the City Council Chambers. Um, before we get started, I'd like to read uh, message it will just take two minutes i've timed it oh i'm sorry yes sorry we have mr um charbonneau mr wilson mr curtis mr vashon miss um dolgan city manager and mr johnson city clerk treasurer um i'll read this before i call the meeting to order I, please let me read this. Thank you. I appreciate your patience and your attention. This is a message to the good people of Newport. I hold myself to a very high and principled standard in my life and in my elected role. You should hold me and every single person at this table to the high standard, to the same high standard. On my first day as mayor, I arrived at the city manager's office very excited to learn about my new role. Not once, but twice, she told me, and I quote, people will want to see you fail. After the second time, I replied, I believe people will want to see me succeed. I still believe the community wanted to see me succeed. I believe that there are others who wanted to see me fail. Since the first day, it was clear that I was not their mayor of choice, but I was the people's choice. I had spent 75 days being intimidated and bullied, and I was actually commanded not to do certain things and forbidden from doing others. This was done via email, text, and verbally behind the closed doors of executive session where there is no accountability to the public. Deviating from the warned subject of an executive session is a blatant violation of 1 VSA 313A. It goes like this. A motion to go into executive session shall indicate the nature of the business of the executive session and no other matter may be considered in the executive session. On May 9th, I endured a grueling 95 minute executive session that violated this legal statute. This was not the only time, perhaps, they are ignorant of the laws and statutes. After this first 95-minute executive session, 
I received a text thread from a council member, unnamed, part of which read, they wanted much worse. I took this as a, excuse me, I took this as a threat. No elected official should serve with complete dedication and be treated with complete contempt. They wanted much worse. There were other blatant statute violations, but tonight I am talking to you, the good people of Newport. I love being your mayor, not for the glory, but for the service. However, it is with a very heavy heart that I say the people who wanted to see me fail have clearly won by their definition. By my definition, people of Newport, we have won because I will continue to serve, mayor or not, with the same enthusiasm, the same vigor, and the same dedication because we have work to do and we will do it together. Please accept this letter of resignation in the City of Newport Council Chambers. I will be available for comment, but not tonight. To the Council President. Thank you. in charge of the meeting right now. So I think we already had to call to order, even though she said she hadn't, but yeah. she notified everyone here. I have a point of order, Mr. Uh, Wilson. Uh, two minutes. Um, my point of order uh, pertains to the statute about who can call a meeting. And it specifically says the mayor uh, is the one who is uh, entitled to bring before everyone what he or she deems worthy of their attention for prudently and efficiently carrying on the affairs of the city. In other words, she, in this case, was in charge uh, of putting the agenda together. She never, she said last time, she never got uh, to put the agenda together. Uh, she never was even asked to call the meeting and specifically says that said city council shall hold a meeting on the first Monday of each month and oftener at the call of the mayor, not the call of the city council. The only uh, thing that talks about when a city council can call um, a meeting is when it can call the voters together to meet. And that is a total stretch uh, of what these meetings are about. Number two, uh, the, the state statute, which I provided you, says that the city manager can do an awful lot of things, but the one specific thing that she can't do is she can't call a special or an annual town meeting. Um, and I need to know as well who then um, would have started the conversation with the manager about uh, calling a meeting and what they gave for the reason for the special circumstances and what they gave for the agenda. Who did that to begin with? And how did all these other agenda items get added unless they were thinking about all of these uh, agenda items as once? So who called the meeting? That was a good question that Jay Walsh asked. Who made the phone call? Was it from the city manager to you, or was it from you to the city manager? 
and what did you say the reasons for a special meeting were, and what were um, the agenda items? Well, an answer? Yep. In the executive session, it was called, the council said we need a special meeting. Yes, the mayor wasn't available, because she'd walk, already walked out of the meeting. Yeah, she and she explained off. why. Okay, well, you got your answer. She left the meeting that we decided we needed a special meeting. And the reason is we've delayed, and we have delayed successfully, I'll say. And in less than 10 days, we have no city manager. We're not, we weren't getting any guidance from the mayor. And we, I, I guess I'm going to say this, hopefully the lawyer doesn't lay charges on me. We have had, uh, we've had to delay putting out to the firm that's going to search for a new city manager. We've had to delay that. We've had to delay a possibility of an interim manager. Oh, yes. And then, uh, on, it was, tonight was going to be the interview with the hopeful uh, interim manager. But after seeing the last couple of meetings, she pulled her name out. Oops, I gave up her gender, excuse me. The person pulled it back. We've already, before we've even gone out, and with the, the paperwork that we need to do, as to what Newport's about and, and in the search, we haven't even been able to do that yet. And we've wasted a good five weeks yeah. just to do that. Because of whom? But it was the council because itself, the council called for the special meeting because we realized that if this city's going to go forward and we find somebody to take the job, we got to get going on it. Did you call her and ask her to set up a special meeting? Because no, you know that's her role. out of the meeting, ma'am. Yeah, and all it okay. takes is I'm a phone call. I'm now. I've said, I gave you your answer. Point of order. No. Oh, yes, the lawyer, yes. Go ahead and speak. So in your reply to Ms. Chirillo, you talked about the special meeting agenda that was for Saturday. Was <coughs> the original special meeting agenda for tonight's meeting also set in executive session because tonight's meeting agenda originally was only the violation of open meeting law and the water and sewer vote yes and that was set during yes. executive session saturday well. i said we're out of here whatever we're going to do saturday add to tonight i understand that sir that's not my question there. my question but is was was tonight's meeting and the original agenda for water and sewer and the open meeting violation also set during that executive session because there were two meetings one yes. on saturday and one today i already so answered yes the answer is yes because okay thank you here. thank you all right we have uh additions uh, that's not needed now not needed okay we'll eliminate number two number three public comments i have quite a few signed up so i don't have a fancy Two minute clock, but I will watch this. And if I don't make eye contact, I'm not shunning you. I'm watching the clock. It's this all time. Okay. The first one is a Felicia Updike. Hi, I'm Felicia Updike. I'm, I'm the executive director for MCM. Um, I just want to talk about the Newport City Council meeting participation guidelines, and I wanted to ask the council if we could follow guideline number two which is when the public raises their hand, they are once recognized if everyone can please state their name and address or affiliation so we can know who's speaking. Thank you. Did you, do that? Did you give us yours? Yes, please shut. Yes. I thought you yes. said the town you're from. I'm affiliated with MCM. Okay. Next one is, oh, we're going to get a history lesson on shunning from uh, Ann Shirella. <laughs> uh, thank you. It's um, amazing, and I did not know in advance that uh, Beth Barnes was uh, resigning tonight. But I wanted to uh, mention that the, there are two things about a contract that's um, coming up uh, for review. Allegedly, a contract with 
the city manager to stay on in some fashion or work for you in some fashion. And I gave you the uh, charter provision with respect to that, which says uh, specifically that no city official shall be directly or indirectly interested in any contract with the city. So I submit to you that you cannot look at a contract with the city manager while she's still city manager. Um, it's not just a conflict of interest. That would be one thing, and it is. But two, it's a direct violation of Section 28 of the city charter. Two, um, I want to mention that when you go, because you'll go into that executive session without us speaking to you first, I want to remind you of certain names that you should remember who were shunned under this administration. Um, Julie Raboyne, who had to come out of executive session uh, to let you guys know what was happening. Um, John Wilson, who, uh, because he voted against the budget one time, was shunned and got up and said uh, in a city council meeting what was happening to him. And he eventually made the motion, as I recall, to have the city manager not reappointed. Remember that when you're going into this session. Um, remember some of the other people. Charlie Elliott. Remember the fire marshal, our last fire marshal, whose wife, the sheriff, came in uh, to, rep to, to represent what had happened to him. Remember all of those people that um, wound up under this administration, and I believe I I've forgotten one. Can I wrap it up? Time is up. Andy Capello, who's got an ACLU suit against the city, not only did you shun him, you prevented him from being on any city property. So remember all those things when you think about extending in any way, shape, or form what we were grateful to see, which was the uh, termination of this city manager's I, uh, business. I believe you've had an extra <laughs> bit of time after I told you your time is up. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Next would be a follow-up. No, Pamela, okay. though you're Pause. dropping out of that one, set. okay? Next one is uh, Melissa Pedersen. So I, uh, my name is Melissa Pedersen. I live in Newport, Vermont. I'm a former older person. Um, I just wanted to make a general statement tonight. Um, I'm not here for any specific issue that's going on or it's on the agenda. But I did want to reinforce the decision-making authority of the council. Just, again, this is an opinion piece. Um, as elected officials, they are entrusted with the authority to make decisions based on what they feel is the best interest of the city and its citizens. What makes this a difficult, what makes this difficult is it means all citizens within the scope of the city charter. This means all citizens, young, old, middle-aged, in between, whatever you want to call or whatever you want to identify yourself, it's all citizens. Knowing this, it becomes quite impossible to make every citizen happy and it's also impossible to meet every single want of the citizenry. The job of the older person is, is difficult enough. The courage to even run for office in general, or in this town at this time, um, is to be admired. Many good potential candidates have been turned off by the constant haranguing, vicious personal attacks, and insults hurled during city council meetings. The behavior demonstrated by some audience members is inexcusable in a civil society. In my opinion, it appears to have evolved into a sport over the years, with the end game being disruption and gotcha games. The big prize appears to be to get one's name in the newspaper with a bit of fleeting fame on any KTV or on Facebook. As a tax-paying citizen and former older person, all I ask is that Mr. Charbonneau, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Curtis, and Mr. Vashon make the best decisions they can in the best interest of the city and the people as a whole. And that our residents who choose to attend meetings maintain some decorum, some civility, and manners that I would hope that their parents try to instill in them as children. Just remember, sitting at the... Oh, sitting at the table, are, just remember that sitting at that table are members of this community with families. Choosing to do civil duty does not make them evil. Next would be uh, 
of Paul Monet. For the record, Paul Monet, citizen taxpayer. Um, <clears throat> this is for the city council members. The discussion, this is about water and sewer. The discussion of water and sewer rates has gone on for months, and it's time to decide whether to raise them. I would like to remind the council that you are elected to represent 4,500 citizens and not just a few vocal ones who attend meetings. The citizens have entrusted you with making the correct decisions in the best interests of the city of Newport and not to a few who appear to be trying to bully and intimidate you with their end game of destroying our community. At this time, I'd like to address a letter to the editor that was in the Newport paper. It was about water and sewer. And my response to that one comment in that letter was, the water and sewer users should not be subsidizing the nonprofits through their tax rates. They need to pay their fair share. We already support them via our property taxes and appropriations. The statement about nursing homes closing was not due to water and sewer rates, but due to the lack of employees and federal financial reimbursements. And only one nursing home closed in the city of Newport. I know they stated two, but only one closed. Another statement was made regarding how a past state auditor could not understand the enterprise funds. Well, my question for everyone at this table is, were any of you contacted by anyone from the state auditor's office regarding our enterprise funds? Because I would certainly think if they found any impro impropriety, look, you know what I'm saying, um, improper, whatever, they, thank you, you would have all been contacted, especially the manager of the clerk treasurer's office, since Jim's office is really the one that handles the finances. Um, also, I'd like to remind everyone the importance of reserve funds, because following the conversation, it appears some want to eliminate reserve funds. And a few years ago, just to remind the council, the water treatment facility had a major equipment failure. That cost 50000 Luckily, we had reserve funds for that. Um, also, last year, the wastewater treatment facility had major issues. We had reserve funds. Having reserve funds ensure available ensure for emergencies uh, avail, uh, avoid the possibilities of significant swings in the rate from year to year. And I just want to close real quick by quoting the December 14th Chronicle, Newport's water and sewer business. The budgeting method used by the city of Newport is common and is employed by Newport's near neighbor Orleans. John Morley, village supervisor, said the situation in Orleans Village is slightly more complicated because of the electric utility, but the basic principle remains the same. And that's what I just wanted Thank to you. say. Thank you. Next is Chris Roy. Yeah, Mr. I'm all set, Mr. President. Thank You're you. All. Okay. And the last one that signed up is Jen. Is it Burling or? Burling. Burling. Uh, you have two minutes or plus or minus two seconds. Right. So I'm going to change topic a bit because of the nice events. But I would like to add, answer some of the public comments made tonight. I am a resident and a taxpayer, and I became intimately involved in the city politics when I had a property dispute over my merging of my parcels of my land. In that process, I was harassed, I was screamed at, I was forced to go to an appeal meeting that was an illegitimate me meeting in which I was exposed to COVID. And all I was asking was that a clerical error be remedied. This council sat complicit as these events unfolded. It was despicable. To make a long story short, those of us who are very active in the local politics are not active because we're trying to take Newport down. We're not active because we want to destroy the city. We're active because we want transparency we want our elected officials to be held accountable, as is our right under the Vermont Constitution and Vermont statute. We want to make sure that the statutes are being abided by. We want to make sure that the city charter is being followed. Those are not unreasonable requests. And we have been bullied and silenced and screamed at every inch of the way as we have made those requests. And I think every single one of our council members should go home and look at themselves in the mirror and ask, am I honoring my oath? Am I following the statute? 
Am I following the Charter? Am I following the Vermont Constitution? Those are the questions that you need to ask. Thank you very much for those comments. Uh, number four. I have, I have a comment that I wasn't able to sign up in time. You picked up the paper. Uh, I didn't pick the paper up. The, uh, this here? It was right there until uh, yeah. Yeah, that was Merrill yep. left. So, no. I'll give you. I'll give you the two minutes. Okay. But you, Thank you. You have you and in your plenty of time. You could I appreciate. It. I appreciate. It. Yeah. Um, so first off, if I believe Mr. Wilson, uh, excuse me, Mr. President, you um, said that you, the members of the council, discussed in the special meeting holding, or excuse me, in executive session discussing, discussed having these special meetings. Um, that is clearly a violation of the open meeting law. You're not to discuss any matters other than what was cited for that, that executive session. Uh, the other thing is that, that I don't think that you guys realize that you have no authority outside of uh, this deemed council meeting to call any votes. You are not a party to anything until, you are, uh, until the meeting is called and you are acting in your capacity as councilman. Other than that, you're just aldermen. You don't have a vote. You can't call around a vote and, and uh, solicit a vote in any other manner. You can only do so in this meeting. It's clearly stated in the city charter that the city mayor is the only one to call these meetings. It's clear in two different sections. If you want to call a special meeting, you can do so during a regular council meeting or during a, a, council, uh, a special meeting but you don't have any authority outside, so this meeting is, is illegal. The last thing is that your attitudes are inexcusable. To take a new mayor and belittle them numerous times in executive session where you know that she can't divulge what has gone on. I mean, that is just pure cowardice. I mean, for, if you guys were to do that right here in front of the public, I could, I could accept your your uh, reasoning, but to do so behind closed doors where you know that you're protected by, and it's not even a law, but you're protected by the, the privacy of that meeting? The cowards, all of them. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is up. Wonderful comment, sir. Well deserved. All right. Now that we've got Wilson, enough. I do have a no, I'm done. Here. We're going on to number four. Consider Attorney communication for legal services regarding uh, open meeting law notice. And I have a motion to go into executive session. And by the way, our lawyer said we could do this. I'll make a motion. Okay. Uh, under, you have to read it under BSA. Uh, yeah, yeah, Mr. President, we can provide the motion language if that would be easier. This is the correct one. I move that the council make a finding that premature public knowledge of communication providing legal services from the city attorney would clearly put the city, put the council in disadvantage by disclosing privileges, privileged communications. I have a motion. Go here a second. Okay. Excuse me, uh, Mr. President, but that is insufficient. That is a portion of the motion. There must be another part <coughs> to say what the attention is. I believe you do that first, and then if second, they talk about what the motion is going to be. It's a two motion? Yes. This is a two motion. Your first one is to move that premature public knowledge and uh, would put the council at a disadvantage. We have to go through that one. If approved, then uh, uh, a move, a motion to go into executive session to consider communications providing legal services from the city attorney. Okay, that would be having yeah. done that. Yeah. 
Two All motions. those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We're going to go into executive session. Okay. We'll shut that again. off. And PSA section 313A1A uh, to consider communications providing legal services from the city attorney. All right. We have the motion. Do I have a second again? I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And we're going to go into executive session and there's like two or three tonight so uh, i apologize for you all having to get up and leave and then you can come back mr and, president mr yes. president friendly amendment uh the statutory reference is one vsa 313 a1f confidential attorney client communications for the purposes of rendering professional legal services to the council it is not a okay Thank you. And it would be contracts, and that's going to happen later in the meeting. Okay. Thank you. <coughs>
public discussion before the motion is made and seconded and the discussion portion between the, the second of a motion and a vote is intended for uh, board members only under Robert's rules. Uh, that said, in this instance, if you, uh, it's, it's probably better to allow the individual to speak before you vote. All right. Go ahead. And, and then I think that our general <coughs> rules of procedure need to be amended because you have allowed us to talk only uh, once the, the uh, motion and the second has been made, then we're allowed <coughs> to speak before the vote. So if, if this is better practice, so we should be changing those rules. So as I recall that I read briefly, though we haven't been presented with uh, what uh, Jennifer Bureling presented, um, but I, I seem to remember somewhere in it she suggested, and she may correct me, uh, that if you've talked about things in the session um, that were not part of what you said you were going to talk about, then you should come out and tell the public what it was that was said about um, Beth and to Beth, because um, that, that was inappropriately part of your meeting. So I want to know what was said. Uh, council advises the, the board that you've already told them what was said, mm -hmm. and you have no obligation to do so. Uh, but you've discussed, you said already that you discussed uh, actions of the mayor briefly. That's what was discussed in the executive session before you turned to the discussion of appointing a new city manager. But I would like the details. Because anything that should have, that was said there, that was no part. Action, no action was taken. And it was an executive session. Uh, that's that's yeah, it. That was a violation. The best description of what was said was that there was a discussion uh, about the actions of the mayor. Point of order. Go ahead, Mrs. Beard. It's my understanding that if action is taken in an executive session that is beyond the scope of what the executive session was warned to be, that that action is void. And this council tonight admitted that they, as a council, set both the Saturday special session and tonight's special session and voted on it. And that action is therefore void. And this, me this meeting should not be taking place. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, would you like me to respond? Yes, I would, sir. Uh, first of all, no action was taken at the executive session uh, that is the subject of the open meeting law violation. No motions or other action was taken. Secondly, correspondence or meetings to discuss the scheduling of a meeting or setting an agenda are exempt from the open meeting law's requirements. Thank you. Uh, the city attorney, I, I have to let the council know that we have to sign off uh, in approximately uh, five minutes. So, we have, we have completed number five. Okay. We have a motion for next time. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. So now we're going on to number six. Yes, Chris. Um, where, 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 how did Ms. Per, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce her name. How did she contact you regarding the uh, violations? And I would like to have a copy of that. If it was sent Actually, I read it in the newspaper the next day. Yeah. yeah. I have sure. her right there. She's sitting right there. Mr. Uh, President, we're going to sign off. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for what we've you've already done. All right. Uh, Number six is for the purposes of setting the water and sewer rates as presented. And we've already had the discussion in the last meeting, so we can go right to a vote. Uh, do I hear a motion to accept the water sewer rates 
Mr. As President, presented. you already have a motion on the floor on that. Yeah, that was. It's can never have motion. too many motions, though. I think they said that. So, we have a motion to accept. Right. We've already had discussion. I'll make the motion to accept the water and sewer rates as presented. All right, we have a motion. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. A second from Chris Ashaw. Uh, discussion. Hi. Hi. Yes, ma'am. I would like to know what has changed. What has changed since the last meeting when you were given the opportunity to vote and you all sat silent? What's different tonight? What additional work did you do? What additional inquiry did you do? I'd like to hear from each council member individually. I'll answer you. Um, I've only been here 75 days. I've watched 14 months of council videos with all the back and forth. I was here for the presentation that some of you were here for with um, Stacy and Becky, the city manager. I read every email that was submitted regarding the increase, the concerns, the questions twice. I sat in this room with the city manager and Becky to discuss what's going on. I went downstairs and sat with Mr. Johnson and Stacy and asked questions. And I was even on the phone today with Mr. Johnson asking where we're at. At the end of June 2022, we were 440, 460,000 some odd dollars short. As of today, when I spoke to him, water and sewer combined were $902,500 in the hole. That's what I've done. What am I going to do when the auditors are back at the end of June? I'm going to go down and sit with them. I don't know for how long, but I'm going to sit with them. And speaking to the individuals that I just told you about, I'm not a genius, but I couldn't find anything wrong. Yes, we could argue all day about leaching. Doesn't matter what it was, we lost income. Based on that and the fact that there's almost a doubling of the deficit, um, we need an increase. Why was I silent last Monday? I didn't know what we were voting on. So I asked the city manager to please tell me what we were voting on. So a document was provided. It was on the website all weekend. I'm not going to get it exactly right, but it equates to about a 10% increase across the board. That's all I got to say. That's the difference. I got a document that you have access to that equates to about a 10% increase. There's more needed, but I think as my colleague, Mr. Vashon, said last week or the week before, we have to do it in increments. When is the next increase? I can't tell you. Did you look at any of the underlying expenses? Mr. President? Yeah. I move the question. Move the question. It's, it's done. Uh, we have a motion and a second to accept the uh, water and sewer rates as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. And if I was voting, I would have an aye also. So the motion is passed. Now number seven, the review of the city manager job, dis job, job description and recruitment ad. And these were things that we had tried to do a little while ago, but I guess we're going to do it tonight. I'm not going to sit and read the entire description. If you'd like one, see the city manager. I'm sure she'd be glad to give you one. And then for the ad, which is also part of this uh, section of the vote, it's uh, the city manager for the search. This is the description about the city of Newport. 
I could read that one to you if you'd like to hear it. It's going to go out for the search. You already heard it. And um, it says that we're, ooh. So we already have it. Should you desire to see what's going to be uh, put in the papers for a search for a city manager, okay. call the city and they'll give you a copy of it. So uh, number seven, uh, we we're going to review the city manager job, job description and recruitment ad. Uh, do I hear a motion on that one? I move to accept the city manager job description and recruitment ad. I hear a second. I'll second. Discussion. Nobody's waving their hands, okay. So I have a motion and a second to accept the uh, city manager's job description. It's been added, some new things have been added. And for the, the ad for the search. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. So, Mr. President, I would like to have a copy of this documentation. Either email to me or. City manager will get you a copy of it. Number eight evaluation of a program administrator. Likely executive session. And with an anticipated vote. So do I hear a motion to go into executive session? Mr. President, I'll make the motion to go into executive session for evaluation of the program's administrator, Title One BSA, <coughs> Section 313A3. Do I hear a second? Second. I hear a motion and a second to go into uh, executive session for the evaluation programs administrator. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, we're going to go back into executive session. Mr. President, what's, what's the program administrator? Is this a new position or is that? No, it's not a new position. We'll discuss it in a When we come back, we'll know that. Executive session, we discuss the evaluation of a program's administrator. And do I hear a motion? I move to promote Rebecca Terrian to the title of programs director at the rate of $42 an hour, effective 6 5 23. Do I hear a second? Second that. Okay. Discussion? No discussion? So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. So <coughs> we are promoting Becky Terrian to... Uh, uh, yeah, do we have a second? Oh, uh, Mr. President, I'm just curious. Could you um, give some idea of what the difference between the two positions are and what the responsibilities for each? Ma'am, would you like to? Sure. Um, actually, can I look at that? So the programs, the programs administer, administrator position is more of a support position, whereas the director position brings um, that up to a department head equivalent. And this position will have authority to review and approve all invoices monitor and direct all the incoming city manager messages, um, <coughs> including the city manager email account, which is generally more than 50 per day. We'll she will facilitate the 24-25 budget process with the department heads. She will coordinate city manager responsibilities with the auditor and grant contacts. She will assist in preparing agendas and attend city council meetings, although some of those might have to be um, remote attendance. Um, she is the newly assigned delinquent tax collector. 
that was appointed la at the last meeting. Um, she'll approve banner requests. She'll maintain the website and other duties as assigned. She has a higher level of freedom to take action and autonomy. And uh, the job knowledge is a little um, more in depth than that of administrator. Can you uh, tell us whether or not you determined how much of her salary would be paid by water and sewerage? And how much, and how much uh, would be paid, but therefore, since she's taken on these other activities? No. No, we haven't considered that. You haven't decided. Not yet. The, 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 this is one other time. Come September, when we're doing the budget, we, we could use all this expertise that's out there. So we have a motion and a second to appoint uh, Rebecca Terran. All those in favor say aye. Aye. I think I did it. And opposed? And the ayes have it. So, uh, I guess I am signing for the city of Newport. <clears throat> All right, on uh, number nine, item number nine, um, we're going to do I we're going to table that motion. So do I hear a motion to table number nine? So moved until the next uh, regularly okay. scheduled second. Council meeting. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Discussion. No discussion. Then uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. And that will be uh, tabled to 5 January, our next meeting. June. 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 What did I say? January. Well, it starts with J. Now we're going to have number 10, a quick public statement on the city manager transition. And okay. Ms. Dolgan will tell you what she is doing for the transition. So with the, um, with the activity and action that the council took tonight, we're able to uh, circulate the new job description as well as the recruitment back to the company that the council has engaged, which is called Municipal Resources Incorporated. They now have all the information they need to start launching that ad. That ad will be placed on a, a national website of the uh, International uh, City and County Managers Association. It will be posted in the Burlington Free Press. We'll post it locally. And uh, the company will take care of um, background checks and um, vetting the first level. They'll be communicating with the council. Um, I have, uh, Becky has just agreed to a promotion, which will be a stopgap measure to help in during the city manager recruitment. Um, I think that's the best thing that could happen given the late juncture that we're at. Uh, my departure is June 2nd. On June 5th, I will be again on the agenda for a proposed contract for consulting services so that I can provide some assistance for Becky while the uh, recruitment is underway. And that seems uh, like a good way to guarantee continuity of operations. Um, my contract will cap at 20 hours and be renewed as needed. It's anticipated the city manager recruitment could take as much as six months. So we want to make sure that um, continuity of operations is in place on behalf of the city council and the department heads as well as the community. So I think that is um, a good way to manage going forward, given how close we are to my departure and how much time. Unfortunately, things didn't happen due to circumstances beyond everybody's control. So I feel pretty Mr. good about Wilson, that. I just have a, 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 point, a, a question of clarification. Is that, um, Ms. Dolgan, is that 20 hours per week, or 20 hours total, or? It's 20 hours total, and it'll be renewed as needed. Thank you. You're done, ma'am? Okay. Yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, and before I go into the big one of adjourn, um, we received the uh, resignation letter from 
the mayor, and uh, we'll make a formal acceptance possibly on the 5th of June at our next meeting. And now we have a, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. I hear a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? No discussion. All those in favor to adjourn, say aye. Aye. So we are adjourned at, let's see, 717.